I'm Jen, your local New York City guide, and welcome to the Brooklyn Bridge. I am here because it's just gorgeous to share with you one of my new favorite videos. I love to eat. There, I said it. I also don't love waiting in long lines or going to tourist trap restaurants. So this is the top 11 iconic food, many invented here in New York, that you must try when you're visiting New York City or the United States in general, along with the usual history, fun facts, and bloopers, because why not? Okay, roll that custom food intro now. list I'm counting down the 13 most iconic New York born food crazes and traditions you must try. For my ebook book with pictures and my favorite restaurants and more, click the link below. 13. Black and white cookie. Did you know the original Dutch word for cookie means little cake? The black and white cookie is not really a cookie at all, but a little cake with a layer of vanilla and chocolate fondant. The first time the dessert appeared on a menu was in 1902 at Glazer's Bake Shop. In 1994, the cookie also became an anti-racism symbol in the Seinfeld episode, The Dinner Party, where Jerry said, the black and white cookie, I love the black and white, two races of flavor living side by side in harmony. He continues to explain, the key to eating the black and white cookie, Elaine, is that you want to get some black and some white in each bite. Yet somehow racial harmony eludes us. If people would only look to the cookie, all our problems would be solved. 12. Baked Alaska. Delmonico's restaurant, known for their steak, is said to have invented this dessert, initially named the Alaska Florida. In the 1830s, French chefs called this type of dessert an omelette norwege. Delmonico's pastry chef, Charles Ranhofer, is from Paris and named this dessert Alaska Florida after the contrasting temperatures of the meringue and ice cream. The whipped egg whites of meringue serve as an insulator for the ice cream and slow down its melting process. This lavish dish originally originally combined banana ice cream, walnut spice cake, and meringue. It used to cost what would be the equivalent of $40 today, but now the 1867 Classic Baked Alaska costs $14. Delmonico's even has a Rocky Road Baked Alaska variation on the menu. 11. Cronut Dominique Ansel says it took him three months and 10 variations before he invented the perfect cronut, the croissant donut hybrid. It is the pastry chef's most famous creation and one of the few hybrid foods that has survived the initial craze and is still popular today. How do you eat a cronut? If you choose to cut it, use a serrated knife to avoid crushing the layers and do not refrigerate a cronut. It is best eaten within eight hours of ordering. Cronut lovers looking for an excuse to keep going back can try a new cronut flavor every month. 10. Chicken and waffles. The origin of the classic comfort food of fried chicken and waffles is widely debated. Some say it might have started in the southern United States, some say it started in the 1600s with the Pennsylvania Dutch, and other stories point to Harlem. In the 1930s, Harlem restaurants serving chicken and waffles included the Wells Supper Club, Tilly's Chicken Shack, and Dickie Wells Jazz Club. 9. Eggs Benedict. The U.S. Eggs Benedict dish stacks poached eggs on Canadian bacon on an English muffin dripping with hollandaise sauce. The origin story here is also up for debate. It could have first appeared at Delmonico's, but most fingers point to the old Waldorf Hotel. As the story goes, Lemuel Benedict ordered this dish in 1894 to help cure a hangover. Some question if the dish was invented or rather just evolved, citing that Oscar Turkey, the maitre d'hôtel hotel, of the Waldorf never confirmed the story, despite publicly claiming to invent Thousand Island dressing and the Waldorf salad. 8. Waldorf salad. Oscar claims to have created the salad in 1893. The classic Waldorf salad is especially popular in the fall and for the holidays. It is often served on a bed of lettuce and includes diced apples, celery, mayonnaise, and recently walnuts. 7. Red Velvet. The Waldorf Astoria also claims to have invented the red velvet, which is questionable since velvet cakes have been made since the 1800s, and the Adams Extract Company claims they invented the original red velvet cake in the 1920s. Despite its debatable origins, it is still a New York City staple in any shape, from cake to cupcake. 
Six, oyster. New York was once the oyster capital of the world, and New York Harbor once contained half the world's oysters. Back then, oysters were cheap, and before hot dog carts lined street corners, there were oyster carts. Back in the day, the city was built from burning oyster shells. Even Trinity Church was built with oyster shell mortar paste. The Oyster Bar in Grand Central Terminal is a well-known restaurant that opened in 1913. Unfortunately, over-harvesting and pollution destroyed the oyster beds, and by 1927, the oysters in the harbor were too polluted to eat. Now, Billion Oyster Project is recycling shells to rebuild oyster reefs since one oyster can filter about 50 gallons of water daily. 5. Burger. In the early 19th century, German immigrants popularized the steak served Hamburg style in New York City. It evolved to become an American staple, and now in Hamburg, Germany, the hamburger as we know it is called the American steak. Some say Delmonico's was one of the first restaurants to include the hamburger on its menu. The first confirmed menu appearance, though, was in 1873 at August Ermisch's German restaurant. One of the first chains to sell hamburgers in buns was White Castle in 1921. It is now enjoyed around the city in many variations, from the bodega's chopped cheese to the Impossible Burger. 4. Hot Dog Sausages or frankfurters are said to come from Frankfurt, Germany, but where do we get the New York hot dog? And how much is a hot dog cart vendor license? As early as the 1860s, German immigrants served Wieners with milk rolls and sauerkraut from push carts on the Bowery. The American hot dog as we know it was invented on Coney Island. Many think the first hot dog came from Nathan's, but it was actually from Feltman's, which started as a cart in 1867. Later, Feltman's former employee, Nathan, opened his own stand in 1916. In 1893, a German immigrant who owned the St. Louis Browns began the tradition of serving hot dogs at baseball games. Originally called Little Dogs or Dash Hound Sandwiches, because of the long skinny shape, it eventually got the catchier name Hot Dogs, when a New York Journal sports cartoonist didn't know how to spell Dash Hound. The cheapest hot dog cart license available is at Inwood Park and costs only $700 per year. Here, a vendor can make $5,000 in a year. The most expensive cart license is outside of the Central Park Zoo at about $290,000 per year, but where a vendor can make up to $100,000 profit per year. 3. Pastrami on Rye. There isn't a more legendary Jewish deli anywhere in New York or even anywhere in the U.S. than Katz's. You may have seen it in that famous scene from When Harry Met Sally. I'll have what she's having. Katz's Deli was established in 1888, and the Lower East Side Deli was originally known as Iceland Brothers. In 1903, Willie Katz renamed it Iceland and Katz. Then, in 1910, the Katz family bought out the Iceland Brothers and renamed it Katz's Delicatessen. Now there's a second stand location in DeKalb Market Hall in downtown Brooklyn. They pride themselves on a slow curing process compared to commercially cured meat, which typically has a 36-hour process. Katz's corned beef and pastrami can take up to 30 days to naturally cure. Most people order the classic pastrami on rye with nothing else. But I love to order a pastrami Reuben, which adds cheese, sauerkraut, and Russian dressing to the classic rye bread sandwich. The almost $25 Katz's Reuben sandwich seems expensive, but it is huge and really shareable. While you're there, order a knish, which was likely first seen at Yona Schimmel in the Lower East Side around 1910, which I also highly recommend you visit. Two bagel. I currently eat a bagel at least once a week, so I know really good bagels. The name of my favorite bagel spot makes no sense, but their bagels are the best. First, a little history. The origin of the bagel is up for debate. A recent book about the history of the bagel debunked that it was made for the 17th century king of Poland, saying it was likely a cousin to the pretzel and may date back to the Middle Ages. How'd the bagel get to New York? The recipe migrated with Eastern European Jewish immigrants in the late 1800s, where they were made at bakeries. Packaging and mass distribution spread the bagel in the 1960s until by the 1980s, the New York bagel became famously twice the size. What makes the New York bagel special? Ask anyone, they'll say it's the tap water. They say it has the perfect soft balance of calcium to magnesium that makes the bagel chewy. A few famous Jewish bagel spots include Zabar's and Russ and Daughters. 
Most best bagel lists include Tompkins Square Bagels, but it's always packed with tourists and not my favorite bagel spot. After trying many bagel places, including lots of local corner bodegas and delis that often have an awesome bagel, I stumbled into a place an old coworker recommended. It's called Brooklyn Bagel and Coffee Company. The confusing thing is that they only have locations in Manhattan and Astoria, Queens, so the name makes no sense, despite the fact that it sounds like a tourist trap. Surprisingly, it does not disappoint. Seriously, the best bagel. I highly recommend it. I'm often asked, what should you order at a bagel place? So if you don't already have a bagel order, try an everything bagel with a schmear or spread of cream cheese. Or you can also put lox, aka Nova smoked salmon on your bagel. Order whatever you like, but whatever you do, do not toast a fresh bagel. Toasting is meant only to revive an older or frozen bagel. One, pizza. The U.S. consumes one-third of global pizza consumption, and New Yorkers eat 500,000 pizza pies every day. How many pizzerias are there in New York City? 9,000 pizzerias. The New York-style slice evolved from Italian immigrants' Neapolitan-style pizza, which has a thin, crispy crust. If you want a cheese pizza, order plain or regular. If you want to try America's favorite topping, order pepperoni. Instead of the large pepperonis that usually come to mind, the trend right now for many pizzerias is the cute, fancy roni cup pepperoni. Many pizzerias include Rays in the name, but the original Rays from 1959 closed in 2011. In 1905, America's first pizzeria opened called Lombardi's by Gennaro Lombardi in Manhattan's Little Italy neighborhood. It served large pies from a coal-fired oven instead of the traditional wood-burning oven. An employee and Antonio Totono started his own pizza shop called Totono's in Coney Island that is also so good. Then another Lombardi pizza maker opened his own pizzeria called John's of Bleecker Street in 1929. All three original coal-fired oven pizza joints are still open today and I visited all all of them. I especially love John's of Bleecker Street. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please comment below your favorite spot. And as always, say yes to new adventures, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, I'm gonna walk off into the sunset, all beautiful. It's the sunrise. It's early. Okay, cue the beautiful walking intro. Outro. Outro. This is why it's a blooper at the end. So now that I've filmed my beautiful intro on the Brooklyn Bridge, I am here in my Brooklyn sweatshirt and I am like casually eating a burger and a hot dog because that's the next thing we're gonna talk about. And we are here at Shake Shack. I am like awkwardly like leaning on the table because this chair is just like the disproportionate amount. I'm just gonna lean this way because it actually, I think it looks better in the framing. Let's eat this hot dog. Ooh, yes. Oh, do I have to tell you my history part? Mm -mm. Darn it, I can never talk, I can never eat. Like, I'm never allowed to eat because I have to talk about the history first. Ah.